I grew up around Native American people, primarily the Cheyenne and the Crow. I remember coming home one day and we were going to go in a, into one of the kids' teepees with his parents, and the mother said, take those shoes off, they'll make you sick. It was just strange why she would say they would make you sick. Well, I wouldn't have had a clue at that time. In simple terms, grounding is literally putting your bare feet on the ground. When you do that, you're in contact with the Earth, and Mother Earth is endowed with electrons. And these electrons are literally absorbed through your feet. It's like taking handfuls of antioxidants, but you're getting it through the feet. Grounding means connecting to the Earth to support the specific function of the organs of your body. It supports the body as a whole, but it specifically supports organ systems down to the tissues and the cellular function of the entire body. In 1960, we invented synthetic materials. The first thing we did was we put rubber soles, synthetic soles on the shoes. We started wearing sneakers. So this most common sense thing that we are organisms that live and grow and depend entirely on the earth while we're alive. And yet we have completely isolated ourselves from it. We're so disconnected that it becomes this weird thing if we actually slip our shoes off. 95% of people walk insulated on the earth. This was the single thing that happened that probably caused the proliferation of inflammation-related health disorders far and above anything else. This is so incredible. This is Nobel Prize material. I got involved in the cable industry in the early 60s. I first learned the need to ground cable signals as we were developing the industry. When you run a wire into the house, before you can go into the house, you have to ground the cable. I mean, you have miles of wire hanging up there in the air. If there's lightning in the air, it's going to hit the cable. And so what you want to do is create a path to ground for the lightning so that it doesn't enter the house or blow up the TV or create a fire. One day I was sitting at a computer and the computer kept crashing. Uh, I knew it was static electricity, so I put a piece of tape across my desk and grounded it. Then I realized in that process that the outlet wasn't grounded. So I fixed it so that I could get rid of the static electricity. And I didn't think too much about it. I walked outdoors and I sat on a bench. This tour bus pulled up and it looked like they had just been to one of these uh, outlet malls and white Nike shoes were on sale. It just dawned on me, you know, I asked the question, I said, I wonder if it's possible that humans are, you know, we're no longer naturally grounded. I wonder if these shoes could be interfering with us. So I, that night went to the hardware store and I bought a roll of metal duct tape and I just taped it across the bed. I threw a wire out the window and it had a ground rod outside. I connected to the ground rod on one side and connected to the metal duct tape that I had laid on the bed. So when I laid down on the duct tape, I was like grounded because it was connected to the earth. I woke up the next morning and I thought, holy cow, there's something going on here because normally for me to go to sleep, I had to take Advil. So I tried to find out what I could. The internet was hardly anything. This is back in 99 went down to the University of Arizona and to one of their medical libraries, and there was nothing. And in fact, I even tried to find the cause of chronic pain. The cause of MS was unknown. The cause of arthritis, unknown. They didn't know. Nobody knew. So I thought, well, I'll go out to LA. I'll go to UCLA and ask them. They pretty much laughed me off campus. <laughs> they said, you expect us to believe that somebody's gonna put a nail in the ground tie a wire around somebody's toe and it's going to make them sleep better. I said, get out of here. Go away. You're nuts. <laughs> so I ended up having to put together my own study and we grounded 60 people and the reports that came in were unbelievable. TMJ disappeared, PMS disappeared, inflammation reduced, pain. Everybody slept better. Found an anesthesiologist in San Diego. And he says, I don't think there's anything to what you're doing. 
this has got to be an anomaly here, but I'll entertain you. He says, I will prove that you're wrong. Now, we did the study. It's the first study that I did that was a legitimate study where we had quantifiable data. Then we decided, well, we're going to do a big study now. And we ended up attracting scientists, physicists. When they saw the study, everybody said, well, this is really pretty interesting. I didn't know anything about grounding. I had never heard of it at all, but I became a new mom and I had my first child and she had colic and she cried and cried and cried. First thing I did, being a physician myself, was take her to the pediatrician and remember distinctly leaving that pediatrician's office with a knot in my stomach because the first thing they told me is, it's a baby, let him cry. Literally the only time I noticed that she wasn't in pain and the only time I could soothe her was when I was outside and I was barefoot and I had her in my arms. And every time we were outside, she relaxed. I noticed if I did use a stroller or if she was in a car, she was still in pain and uncomfortable. This is not placebo effect. Like she had no idea if I was wearing shoes or not. She doesn't know that. I'm holding her either way. And I just slowly started realizing this child can only take a nap and feel comfort is if she was on my skin, held skin to skin, and I was barefoot. She'd be dead asleep, and if I stepped in the house and took both my feet off the ground, she would wake back up and the pain response would come back. And I didn't know what it was called, and I didn't at that time feel comfortable thinking about using it in my conventional medical practice, but I just knew that this is what I'm gonna do to help my child. I was working with a mentor of mine and she recommended that I ground my energy. I didn't know what she meant by ground yourself. So the first thing I did was go home and look it up on the internet. And through doing a search uh, about grounding, I found Clint Ober's work and the book about earthing. And I realized that it's a real thing and a real healing modality with tons of medical literature behind it. I first learned about grounding maybe 12, 13 years ago through one of the trainers for the Tour de France team from the U.S. And he was using it with many other athletes and with surprising results. And I think the surprising breath summarizes my response to it because it didn't seem to make sense. I think I became a believer once I started to explore the science. If you take a microscope and you look at a piece of wood and you go down, 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 all of a sudden there's nothing there. There's molecules, but they're not even connected. What's holding them together? What's the force that's holding everything together? Our body is electrical. This is all electronic equipment. The heart, the lungs, the brain. I mean, this is electrical equipment. It's all electrical. Everything is electrical. Unbeckoned to us, we live inside a battery. The surface of the Earth is charged negatively, and the ionosphere, which is a layer of the atmosphere about 60 miles up, which is ionized by the sun, meaning that the rays of the sun are so strong that they split the molecules into a positive charge and a negative charge. The negative charge are transferred to the surface of the Earth through lightning, mainly, and the positive charge stay 60 miles up. The problem arises when we don't have negative charge. So we need grounding just as we need air and we need sunshine. Steven Sinatra, who was a cardiologist from back east, was attending a convention. We sat down with Steven and told him the story of what I was doing. Now he said, well, if you're affecting pain, he says, you need to be researching inflammation. You don't have arthritis, you don't have cancer, you don't have all these health disorders. What you have is chronic inflammation. We have so much inflammation in the body and it comes out in illnesses. We go to a doctor with all these complaints, but a lot of it is silent inflammation, including my specialty, heart disease. Heart disease is an inflammatory process. So how do we reduce inflammation? Inflammation is produced by neutrophils, which is a white blood cell. You have an injury, you have a damaged cell. And so these white blood cells come over and they encapsulate the damaged cell and they release reactive oxygen species, which rip electrons from the damaged cell and that destroys the damaged cell. 
if there's not enough free electrons there to reduce the remaining radicals, they're going to steal an electron from a healthy cell and in the process damage it. Then the message goes out to the immune system and another neutrophil does the same thing, eliminates that cell, and then you end up with the chain reaction. ATP is short for adenosine triphosphate. It's the energy currency of the cell. We're a bioelectrical beings. That's the currency of our body. That's how it works. That's how we run our biological systems, is by generating this electrical energy that's transferred. And when we connect to the Earth through a conductive surface in some way, there's a transfer of electrons that slowly go into our body. In situations where we are insulating ourselves from this surplus of electrons into our body, we're going to get the absolute opposite. So instead of having low levels of inflammation in a thin blood, we'll have thick blood that's more likely to clot, and our levels of inflammation tend to increase. You could take anybody who has chronic pain. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter what's wrong and ground them, and you're going to have a significant reduction in pain. You're going to stop the oxidation or the inflamed portion. That stops almost immediately. Then the body can heal and, and return to normal. And healing generally uh, is improved by 60%, 70%. If inflammation is the cause of all these health disorders, then I know that not grounding is the cause of inflammation, because if the body is grounded, you can't have inflammation. Can we measure the effects reproducibly? The answer to that is yes. We have now have 20 studies. There's like, yeah, 20, 21 published studies in the medical literature on earthing and grounding. And this is peer review stuff. In simple terms, what earthing does is literally, it squenches the fires of inflammation. And if inflammation is the source of all root illnesses, including Alzheimer's disease, cancer, heart disease, diabetes. I mean, the list goes on and on. If you can impact inflammation and, you know, squelch it, kill it, stop it, we're going to be healthier beings. So, like, um, why hasn't it caught on in, in mainstream? I can only say it will. There's a well-established, traditional, conventional system that relies on expensive intervention. So they'd like to perpetuate that, and they're not too interested in having some competition coming in for a lot less expensive to sort of sabotage their profit levels. Because their goal isn't to help humanity. Their goal is, to, is really, as corporations, is increase their profit. The question becomes, you know, how much of an influence has lack of grounding been in the epidemic of disease that we have? Is this grounding a factor? The light switch went on, and I thought, we're doing things completely backwards here. A typical day for a child is completely ungrounded. Most children wake up sleeping on a bed that was not grounded in a house or a building or on a floor that was insulated from the earth. And then they go immediately into a classroom that's insulated. And even on recess, in the recess period, they go outside and are literally fenced in and are paved with asphalt. And then they have after school activities, which are either indoors or if they're outdoors, they are literally required to wear protective gear. Then even if they're exercising for two hours after school, 100% disconnected from the earth. And then they go home and they go inside and they eat dinner and they do homework all hours of the night and then they pass out in an ungrounded bed. So that's a 24 hour period of time, completely ungrounded. And that goes on day after day after day. There's a resistance to integrating novel thoughts. And many times new ideas aren't implemented until the people who hold the counter opinion die. <laughs> the good thing about grounding is that you don't need a doctor to tell you to do it. You do not need a physician to recommend it to you. You can try this anytime. It is your birthright because you live on the earth. I ground every day. Hey, I wanna be connected to the earth as much as I can. I would say about 95% of the day I am grounded because I believe it's, it's just a no-brainer. Go outdoors, take your shoes off, stand barefoot on the earth or sit on the earth, put your feet and your hands on the earth, and you will instantly notice the pain and inflammation begin to drain from your body. I got my life back is probably the most common refrain that I hear. Thank you, I got my life back. 
got my life back.